like she's more uniting and she's moving America to a more progressive, diverse America instead of America that shuts people away who are different than uh, what this country is built on. So that's mainly why I support Hillary. It wasn't made note of by most of the mainstream media, but results from the Georgia and Virginia primaries told a tale that bears interest. To the surprise of both parties, African-American voters turned out in higher numbers demanding to be heard, leaving the pundits to pick from their well-chosen reasons as to why. Some believe it's to tell Bernie Sanders he does not have their support and they stand with Hillary Clinton. Others take it as a sign black voters are rallying behind Donald Trump and will, despite what some believe, make him their candidate of choice come November. It's that second possible conclusion that's raising eyebrows. Because in the wake of the David Duke dust-up and reports that the Trump organization granted media credentials to avowed racists with penny-ante internet radio shows, some are sitting back and calling any thought black Americans will vote for Donald Trump delusional. So let's dig in, get some reality. She is the conservative radio talker heard on KFTK in St. Louis, Stacy on the right, Stacy Washington. And he is columnist from the Daily Beast, Barrett Pittner. I want to thank you both for joining us. And Stacy, I'm going to begin with you. Right into that lead up, exactly as I said it right here. And I'm going to add to this Tavis Smiley's recent column in USA Today that said black America could get on the Trump train. Do you agree with that? I do. Um, there's something that people are discounting, and that is the reality show star, uh, Donald Trump, spent years on television treating black people and white people and Hispanic people and women and men all the same in the boardroom. He has a long history of hiring people based on their excellence and promoting them within his organizations. And while I'm not a Trumpster, if you will, he's not my candidate of choice, I, I can see where Black people, when presented with the words of Hillary Clinton, where she said blacks were predators and that they lacked the ability to have remorse and that they needed to be brought to heel, if you look at her statements over the years and the confrontation she's having almost at every campaign stop with black voters who are asking her questions about her past, she gets angry with them, she's rude to them, she's unable to just stand there and listen and then respond, why not take a look at Trump? At least give him an opportunity to win the vote. And I think that's what's happening. So, Barrett, I'm going to bring you into this as well, and I just want to point out that, I mean, Stacey's right about reality shows, but then again, I've been in the television industry for 30 years. People will do a lot of things to get ratings when it means making money. I'm going to have to counter that right away, but just to make that point. But, Barrett, to you, here's YouGov, a polling firm. Nearly 20% of Trump voters disagree with the Emancipation Proclamation, which freed the slaves in Confederate states during the Civil War. 38% of Trump supporters say they wish the South had won the Civil War. So, Barrett, how do we take those things and put them together with people like Tavis Smiley, who say that black voters will get behind Donald Trump? Yeah, I, I, first of all, I just have to d disagree with Tavis Smiley's uh, perspective that they will get behind Donald Trump. I, I think he definitely, Donald Trump definitely has a, a personality that attracts people to him and, like, you know, you're interested in him and you want to hear what he has to say. But then once we start looking at what he intends to do who his supporters are, who he decides to associate with that could indicate the policies or who he, who will, he will focus on as you know, a potential president, it becomes pretty evident that he doesn't um, have ideas or perspectives that are going to align with a large swath of African Americans, especially when you look at the, the, the instances at his, at his rallies and how disruptive they are and like the, the, just the, the confrontation amongst like black and white people in his rallies and the perspectives of the the voters in South Carolina, it, it looks like, and this is only, we're just the beginning of March, you know, we have many, many months ahead of us, but it looks like a pretty inhospitable environment for African Americans to want to uh, be in, and if that's the case, I, I think it would be difficult for them to still be Trump supporters come November. Stacy, we've heard a lot of reports from the Donald Trump rallies that there are people using racial epithets, there are people shouting some very objectionable words at African Americans who are there in the crowd, but then again, I'm going to balance that. Would you then say that, wait a minute, you can't control who comes to to these rallies in the first place. So how can you blame Donald Trump for that? I'm going to play both ends here for you. Well, I, first of all, can we, can we just also acknowledge that Bernie Sanders had an even higher number of people who said they didn't agree with uh, the Emancipation Proclamation? Bernie Sanders, who's supposed to be the man of the people and the man who represents minorities with the socialism and everything. So the wording on that question for that survey was suspect, and so I wouldn't put any credence in that survey. But beyond all of that, are we actually not going to talk about Hillary Clinton and her hug and kiss on the face with uh, Robert Byrd, a open grand poobah of the Ku Klux Klan? This is a problem that both parties have, that, that people in certain 
uh, political circles have associated themselves with members of the KKK in the past, and now they're not associating themselves with those people. Uh, I, I agree with you that he can't control who comes to his uh, individual rallies and things like that, but we're talking about the way protesters who are disrupting the events are being treated, not just regular run-of-the-mill black Trump supporters. So okay. the people are responding to the negativity that's being spewed by people who are protesting Trump. And these same types of things are happening at Hillary Clinton rallies where people who don't agree with her, um, armed forces veterans are being thrown out, physically and violently removed from her events with her husband when he's on the stage and when she's on the stage. When are we going to talk about that? I only got about 30 seconds left. We need to have the both of you back to discuss this more in depth. I just need to ask you very quickly a comment on today. It's the 25th anniversary of the Rodney King incident in Los Angeles. Stacy, 15 seconds. Have we truly evolved as a society since then? 100,000 police officers, over a million interactions per year between officers and citizens, and we have just a few hundred officer-involved shootings. I think we're doing fine. Same question to you, Barrett. Yeah, I think we've definitely progressed as a society since the, since the 90s. That doesn't mean that we've gotten as far as we need to get to. Uh, but, yeah, we've definitely made improvements without a doubt. There is no doubt we have. There's no doubt that this is going to continue. And, again, I apologize for the short amount of time here because this whole issue with Donald Trump, with the Republicans, the Democrats, and exactly what the African-American voter wants is something that we need to dig into further. We're going to have you both back again very soon to do just that. Barrett Pittner, Stacey Washington, thank you so much for being here. We'll talk to you again real soon. Is it possible that a well-spoken former Republican presidential candidate is the key to turning the GOP tide against the Donald? That's next right here on The Hardline.